Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Colmston Farm here in Farm Simulator 22 with me, C. Waddy. As you can see, I'm currently in the process of loading wagoning the grass that I mowed in the last episode. It is a lovely March morning. I had to leave the uh, grass uh, overnight uh, because snow started to fall. I've also had to lease, obviously, the loading wagon. And I'm currently collecting the grass loose on its own. Um, I have been putting some into a lovely little silo building that I bought and placed, um, which cost 30 grand. Um, it is available. The mod is available on the in-game mod hub. It's a, a multi-fruit silo pack. And it gives you these three lovely little wooden silos that you can basically store all fruits in. And they have a 5 million litre capacity. So I decided just to buy one of those. Chuck down here at the end of my, my, my cow farm here. And I've been tipping loose grass into there thus far. I've got the grass picked up off of the um, cow field here, and that's all in the silo. I've been now going and collecting the grass from over at the, um, the, the, the field next to the sheep. But what I've elected to do now is actually start trying to make a little bit of silage maybe as well we've got quite a bit of grass from already picking up the um cow field i've got and doing one load off of the sheep field i've got 164,499 liters of grass okay i am going to now make the rest pick up the rest and i'm going to turn it into loose silage uh, i'm not going to bale it i'm going to make it the traditional way, I'm going to squish it, I'm going to compact it, I'm going to ferment it. Um, tends to work out a little bit better that way. Um, like I say, loading wagon is on lease. Is rented. I could not afford to buy one. <laughs> with my 90,000 bucks after buying the silo. Yeah. Although, to be fair, we have got, like I say, we have got honey and candles. We also have some eggs. Um, and the sheep are obviously still producing wool. I've just lost my way into my field on this one I will need to fertilize both fields after I've collected the grass that is not going to be an issue I'll sprayer and of course it, it is now March which means the uh, the seeding window is open for a, a few of the crops few crops now we are into the seeding window for those um so wheat barley canola oat potatoes sugar beet sugar cane cotton grapes olives poplar grass oil seed radish you can all be seeded again now which is good good news for me um which means there's probably going to be some contracts. Some sewing contracts. Somebody wants potatoes for 77,000. Somebody wants sugar beets for 32,000. Cheers, fellas. Why not give me something I can do with my cedar? Uh, well, there's a fertilizing contract we could go and do. Field 17. And still a couple of uh, cultivating jobs, which are still there from the winter. Nobody seems to want to do the cultivating jobs. I wonder why. 
But yeah, if, I, if I'm going to go grab my fertiliser sprayer after I've loaded up the grass, uh, potentially I can do that contract, that spraying contract as well while I'm at it. I didn't lease this with silage additive, um, this loading wagon. I opted against um, that. Again, that's something that if I think if I was buying one and owning one outright, I would probably get as an option for when I'm doing silage. Again, this was more of a chance just for me to load up with some, um, quickly load up with a little bit of grass. Two percent, eighty four percent. Get another trailer load. Pack it, put it in the bunker next to the cow pen. But it would be nice to get into cows at some point, but to do that, I want to make sure I'm prepared. And that I've got plenty of material stored up, saved up. I'm ready. Yeah, definitely make sure we get that loaded right in the back. Why make it harder for me to ferment, actually? <laughs> That's one thing I haven't quite considered. It might be more harder to compact that grass in the back of that bunker. But we'll see. We'll see. Main thing is to get it picked up today. Like I say, I had to abandon it yesterday because the snow started falling after I'd finished mowing. Um, that was a bit of a problem.
I'm getting a bit of an expert now, though, at getting through the gates. <laughs> I'm kind of learning now what the what the route is to get in and out of the gates without getting stuck on them. But yes, the save is going well. I'm quite happy with how things are progressing at the moment. Obviously, I'll be a little bit happier later in the year when we're harvesting and stuff. I'm starting to see the rewards of some of the work that we've done this series. It'd be nice to then get fields prepped again properly. Get the lime spreading done on our other fields. So that we get obviously better yield then the following year. Yeah, let's get the grass collected and then we can get, like I say, fertilising next. Got to spray the two fields and then we can have a look at doing that contract. percent oh you troll troll game You're gonna make me come all the way back to the field for just a little bit of grass look Grass is still a little bit crisp and crunchy, you may hear, under the sound of the tractor's wheels. We might have had another frost in the evening, in the night. I wanted to go to the um, the silage bunker a different way. I can actually come through the the um, cow pen. go nice and empty again so we just pick up that last little bit with there may be more i'm not going to cover ferment i'm not going to compact and cover the silo yet because there's probably going to there well there will definitely be more grass as the year goes on um because obviously we're going to have a lot more fields to mow before the year goes on Acknowledge the fact that I've just gone the wrong way. I miss my turning.
We'll take a shortcut through the farm. Obviously meant to take the road here, didn't I? Crisp and crunchy grass, crisp and crunchy That's it. And that's all the grass picked up, collected. Take it to the bunker. Dip it in, and then uh, we'll quickly mix shift the honey as well. Didn't do that the other day. So, might as well load the farm shop up with that. And then we can set about fertilising. Doing the contract for fertilising. Using the slightly smaller of the potting uh, um, loading wagons rather than the one I use on my Hout Baler on save, because I figured it would be a little bit easier to get it in and out of these bunkers. Right, leave that there. Um, like I say, honey pallets, we're going to get rid of those. Be useful to have the money. between the wheels. <clears throat> Not to worry, that will soon move. <laughs> uh, 
now it's completely beached under the tractor. Ah, there we go. There's my honey delivered. Right, here's my sprayer. Right, let's go get that fertilizing contract first of all. Field 17. Okay. Gonna need some liquid go go juice. buy a load because we'll probably end up using it so field 17 where is that oh that big one that big juicy one Okay. I'll tell you what, I'm going to spray my own fields first. And then I'm going to go do that. Go, go, gadget wheels. Might as well just spray my grass. Make sure we can reach maximum yield next time. Job done. Go, go, gadget wheels. That's it. Hello, sheeps. Has failed. Go, go, gadget wheels. Go, go, gadget arms. Looking good, ladies and gents. Yeah. 
So yeah, I'm electing to fertilize grass this time rather than roll it. I just think that by um, fertilizing the grass, um, it's quicker. <laughs> Basically, I could do the field rolling to reset the field, uh, the growth, and provide the extra layer of fertilizing. Um, but I think this is probably the quickest way. And especially when we're going to have quite a few fields over the course of the year that are going to be mowed. Um, Again, we want to uh, make sure we get them fertilized and treated as quick as possible. So that hopefully we can get another cut out of them. Like I say, we'll probably do silage bales at the end of the year again in the winter. Sort of November time, if we can. October, November time. Ideally, if we can get a cut. From the other fields sort of april may time that'll be handy right i'm going to refill before i head over to field 17. because i'm i'm going to guess I'm going to need quite a bit of fertiliser to do field 17. got a, a place to lime spreader at the farm as well the other day don't know whether you noticed that or not uh, when i was doing the lime spreading on field one again or two it made it a little bit easier for refilling the lime spreader not having to go all the way down to the shop to um buy me lime and fill the uh, lime spreader up going to come in a lot more useful when we have field 6, 3, 2, 23. Now we go to field 17. Biggish field. Unless I want some not obscured by the tree. Or colliding with trees. Watch out for that. There's a few sprigly trees just in that hedgerow. I don't want to watch out for that. I want to do this first headland. Tell you what, I'm really looking forward to Precision Farming coming out on April 19th. And Giants released that on the Mod Hub. 
going to be so nice to be able to fertilize fields and actually see your progress in the mini map so you can see where you've sprayed and where you still need to spray that's going to be pretty cool Plus, it's going to open up a whole new load of stuff that we're going to have to figure out. Fertilising, stages, reach crop, um, you know, nitrogen levels, um, calcium levels in the soil. We're going to have to do soil mapping again. Have to do all that stuff. Good going to be some new elements as well this year there's going to be uh, weed control crop sensors there's going to be variable rate manure spreading um variable rate weed herbicide spray i think or something like that apparently uh, oh yeah i'm really looking forward to what precision farming's bringing this year and it'd be interesting if there's any new equipment in that as well this year from giants looks like there's a john deere sprayer in the um screenshot that they released on the um website yesterday so we might be getting a john deere sprayer um to tow to tow obviously behind tractors when we're doing our fertilizing and herbiciding and stuff and there were some other tools as well pictured one of the things that Giants have already said this year, the people that didn't enjoy the whole, um, didn't enjoy the whole um, soil sampling process with the scout and the little gator going around digging your, the soil samples out of the fields, you will be able to buy soil maps for your fields, but they haven't provided any further details on that yet. I would imagine if you're buying soil maps rather than doing it yourself, they're going to come at a very hefty premium price. Um, so for the people that are too lazy to soil sample their own fields, if they buy a map, I hope it costs them an arm and a leg. Because again, I think soil, the soil sampling was one aspect of the precision farming mod that was like, you know, you have to do it, you know. Take your soil samples, send them away, get them analysed, see what soil types you've got on your field, and then every you know few few years, every few harvests, obviously your data would begin become slightly out of date. You'd need to renew it. And again, it was just one of those things. It was something else to do. It gave you another job, something else to fill your time whilst you were waiting for crops to grow and crops to harvest and things like that. And I'm, like I say, I'm all for having more things to do on fields. The more times you can keep me in a tractor driving up and down fields, the better. I like being busy. I don't like twiddling me thumbs going, uh, what can I do now, sort of thing. <laughs> you know? So yeah, precision farming was great for that, because it gave you that extra whole new thing. And I, like I say, I really enjoyed it in FS19, and I can't wait to download it and play it in FS22. I think it's going to be very nice, especially on... It's going to be very nice combined with maps like this. You know, good a good quality map, and then precision farming, I think you will be in absolute farm sim heaven. I really do. And honestly, at this point... I'm more excited for the announcement of Precision Farming than I am for the first DLC. Giants announced the other day. <laughs> you know, I'm definitely more excited for that. You know, I think the DLC, the DLC coming out in a couple of weeks time in, in three weeks time i i think that kind of misses the boat a little bit i don't think anyone 
in the farm sim community has ever asked for smaller tractors than what is already featured in the base game. Don't think anyone's ever asked for smaller equipment. <laughs> the one thing about FS22, due to the, 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 the missing equipment in the game currently, okay, and what is missing from the base game, a lot of people have asked for bigger equipment. You know, our seed hawks, our flexi coils, our things like that. Um... So I'm a little bit surprised that Giants have gone down the road of small equipment. But then again, I understand it because obviously Giants have added the grapes and the olives to the game this year. And um, from what I understand, there's been very little uptake so far. A lot of players just not bothering with the grapes and olives in the game. Um, so... Yeah, I can see Giants maybe adding some, to try and get people to give that a, a go to actually, you know, like, hey, people, we put these crops in the game. Please farm them. Please have a go at them. You know, give it a try. You might be pleasantly surprised that they're actually quite fun to do. Um, but... Yeah, it's it's just, it's a tough one. It's a tough one, I think, because you're never going to please everybody with DLC. And certainly for people who bought the season pass, there's a lot of people like, oh, I want a refund. You know, this is I this isn't what I was signing up for. You know, <laughs> or or you know. Fool hey, me, fool, All done with this job. Over. Fool, fool, fool me for buy, pre-ordering the DIC, um, DLC um, before I'd actually um, realised what was in it. That's something we've seen a lot, a lot of comments from people. Like a lot of people saying, "Yeah, I can see why giants were so so sketchy and so vague when they announced the season pass." And the descriptions of the season pass DLC, the content each pack, why they've not actually outlined or said what is going to be in each pack. Um, again, for me, I'm I'm one of these people. Bought the game, I've bought the season pass. I'm happy. I'm happy with the game, and the amount of hours of entertainment and enjoyment it it's giving me each and every week. Um. Any additional content for me, as far as I'm concerned, is good. You know, good content. You know, content is content at the end of the day. I'd rather have a game that has been supported and has had had additional material provided for it than, say, a game like Cattle and Crops. Which, if for people who maybe don't know, Cattle and Crops was a, supposedly going to be a rival to Farming Simulator. It was a game that was being developed by a, a small team of people that was going to be, you know, it was going to be a true farming simulator. Whereas Farm Sim's been a little bit arcadey and it's kind of been designed to be accessible to as many people of as many ages and abilities as possible. Cattle and Crops was designed, to, was designed and intended to be the ultra hardcore simulator. And it spent a lot of years in development. It spent a lot of years in early access. And obviously they were trying to get a lot of people to buy it. Commit to it. You know, this game's going to be amazing once it's done. Please sign up. Please pay us 99, 99 pound, 99 euros, whatever. To get early access to the game. And you will then get access to the full version when it releases. We'll also give you access to four DLCs, future DLCs. So obviously trying to commit and get as many people to sign up for the game as possible um, early on. And I know a lot of people did. A lot of people handed over their 99 pounds, euros, dollars, whatever for the game. And um, unfortunately, after several years in early access, they finally released it 
on Steam. They gave an official, like, this is an official release version, which was still far from finished, still far from complete, with so much of the stuff that they promised missing. And it had bugs, which they were quite slow at fixing and responding to, almost like giants in a sense. <laughs> you know, that's one thing they did have in common with giants. They were very slow at pat releasing patches and updates for the game. And then all of a sudden, one day, an announcement was made. They had ceased development on the game. And that was it. They weren't going to be completing the content. They weren't going to be completing the game. Um, the additional content that you had paid for, the four DLCs, that wasn't going to happen. Um, and yeah, a lot of people that bought into that game got royally screwed over. Basically, the, the developers abandoned the game, took the money, and ran. Um, giants don't do that, you know. Whilst you may not be happy with their what they choose to put out, they at least are putting stuff out. Um, like I say, it's up to you. It's up to the players at the end of the day whether you buy the DLC or not. No one's got it holding a gun to your head. No one's forcing you. Um, obviously, for the people that bought the season pass, that was a, a leap of faith. You've decided to buy the season pass to get a discount on the content and basically get the price of the season pass gives you all the content that they're going to release for Farm Sim 22, the year one content. Where it, and if you were to if you were to buy all that content individually, um, it would cost you more than the season pass based on the pricing um, that Giants have shown in the past for Farm Sim DLC and content. I basically worked out that if you bought the season pass, you're getting one of the DLC packs for free. Based, that's basically when you compared the price of the season pass for Farm Sim 19 with the cost of the individual DLC if you bought individually the season pass for Farm Sim 19 basically gave you one DLC for free which equated to about 15 pound euro dollars worth of content you know so to me buying the season pass saving 15 bucks it's not a bad thing not a bad thing at all and yes whilst you know some people are never going to be happy with the content because it's not what they were after you know in fs19 more people wanted john deere stuff they were hoping there was going to be more john deere equipment all the john deere fanboys wanted more john deere vehicles and equipment in the dlc for farm sim 19 didn't get it <laughs> um and already there's a lot of people this year are like oh there's so much stuff that's missing from the game that was in fs19 we want the bourgeois equipment back you know we want the um we want the um we want a wider range of case equipment we want all the new case equipment added into the game um but obviously giants have got different plans they've got different manufacturers different brands that they want to bring into farm sim and generally from what i i see and what i've seen in the past from the farm sim games the dlcs tend to be a way of introducing new brands new manufacturers new equipment that hasn't been done before you know hasn't been seen before in the series so it might not be a case of getting pace tractors or, you know, Massey Ferguson's or, you know, Valtras or something like that, you know, or John Deere's. Chances are all the DLCs that come out, it's going to be new manufacturers, new brands. Um, and people, like I say, will either love it or they'll hate it. It's like Marmite. <laughs> DLC is like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. The only thing I would say to people is make your own mind up, you know? Make your decision. Commit to it. Stand by it. If you decide you're not buying the DLC, that's fine. But don't, don't 
go harassing people that have bought it. You know, don't go on forums and Facebook groups and, and start abusing people that have bought the DLC and are looking forward to the DLC. Same way as if you, you know, if you haven't bought the DLC and you're not going to buy the DLC, don't comment in posts about the DLC, slagging off the DLC or slagging off giants. You know, you've made your decision. You're not buying it. That's fine. That's all you have to do. Okay. That's all you have to do. You've you've made your decision. You've 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 spoken with your wallet. You don't need to fill forums and discords and Facebooks and stuff with, you know, ranty negative, pointless comments and stuff, and Steam forums. You know, and oh. You know, just be a bit more mature, people. If you don't like it, fine. Don't buy it. But, like I say, let the people that do want to buy it, do so and enjoy it. And don't keep posting the same repetitive rubbish everywhere. <laughs> you know? Could be worse. At least you're not having to pay for loot boxes. <laughs> you know? But yeah, I'm looking forward to the precision farming. Like I say, fertilizing jobs like this are going to be so much better when precision farming's here and you can actually see where you've fertilized. And see where you've been. I'm 61% contract complete. Suppose the one good thing. Got the uh, contract hood mod installed and enabled, which, like I say, does let you. Hey, good money. Hey, good buddy. Might be a little bit easier for me just to hire a worker briefly. Do this. Oh no, I can't, can I? No. Just wanted to let you know I'm done with the job. I'm not allowed. That was one of the rules of the series. I'm not allowed to use helpers, am I, for um contracts? Huh? Uh -huh. So yeah, probably not the most efficient use of um fertilizer. What I should have done, numpty. Probably use my GPS. That's not going to work, is it? That works. There we go. I should have used that from the start. I didn't think. I didn't think. It's because I'm so used to the class track to not having DLs, uh, not having GPS. I am. So used to my class not having it. Right then, ladies and gents. I will. Carry on then, carrying on and get this field done, get it sprayed, I'll then bring you back for the next episode sometime very soon. But for now, we're here on Calmston Farm with me, C. Wally, it's goodbye ladies and gents.